The F and Rad Snowboard Podcast is presented by Skyview Campers, Never Summer's innovative take on the tiny home. Designed and built in beautiful Colorado, check out skyviewcampers.com. Wired Snowboards builds quality snowboards by hand, 10 minutes away from my house. Visit wiredsnowboards.com and order one today. Fixed bindings are easy to adjust, long lasting, high performance bindings built to have less impact on the environment. Check out fixbindingco.com. Rip Curl Outerwear strength, durability, and performance. Designed to search further in the snow, head to ripcurl.com and check out the anti series jacket. I can't wait to rock this thing. New Greens 100% organic, vibrant green juice. Buy yourself some at newgreens.com and use code F and Rad at checkout for 20% off. The Boardroom Snowboard Shop, best selection, best prices. Vancouver's premier snowboard shop, the Boardroom ships to anywhere in North America. So go to boardroomshop.com or visit their stores in Vancouver and North Van. Support also comes from Mount Seymour, Grouse Mountain, Cypress Mountain, the Pro Standard GoPro Accessories, and our friends at 1910. You can use code FNRAD at checkout for 20% off at 1910.com. The Haven's a center for transformational learning located on beautiful Gabriola Island. Plan a visit at haven.ca and use code FNRAD at checkout to save 10% of their Come Alive program. Mike Chantry's first snowboarding contest he put together was the Worlds in 1983 at Soda Springs, where he also placed 17th. Mike's been instrumental in most of the big contests in snowboarding, and he's now co-hosting the Legends of Tahoe event at Donner Ranch for the last 20 years. His history runs deep in both skate and snow, and he's earned his place as one of the founding fathers of freestyle snowboarding. Bostic started this thing... Um, probably 97, 98, uh, kind of was an offshoot of raging at the ranch, you know, kind of trying to get the, some of the legends and more of the locals and stuff involved and just having a fun day. But it was all, it was a one day event back and he would just do a race. There was nothing about the pipe and, you know, until I got involved in this, like, I'm Mr. Half Pipe. So it's just like, you know, fuck racing. I'm, you know, I'm a freestyler. I want to do the pipe. You know, it's like racing is, you know, boring. Sorry. Um, but 2005, I, you know, I came on board and we started doing them, you know, moving them around Boreal to here, to soda, you know, back and around stuff. Any little. So it's more than 20 years old. This. Yeah. yeah it's, it, this is the 19th edition this year. So. Amazing. Got to hope. Yeah. That's a lot of years. Um, <laughs> but. Almost got kicked out for garbage last year. What was that all about? We, um, we they just, were people they were, were messy. Yeah, they were kind of you know well, snowboarders, man. What do you want? You know, yeah. It's like it's 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 like herding cats. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just there was a there was a little bit of trash, and we got a, you know, it was just I was brain dead by the time the awards were over like that. And there was boxes, you know, board boxes and uh, product boxes and shit you. laying around there, and we, nobody tore anything down. And you're just and, you just like know, we're out. and trash. Yeah. And they came out, and everything was just it was like you know wasteland on the deck. So. And, but, you know, I was kind of bummed that they didn't get a hold of me that, that week after or something. Right, right. You the know, time until later, it was like, it was like, like yeah, why are yeah. you waiting so long? You know, it's like, we tried to get a hold of him. I'm like, dude, man, I was going through COVID and flu and all this other shit. And I couldn't deal with that. You know, it's just like, hey, you know. Um, it's a lot to put on an event. Hey. Yeah. It's a know, lot. But, you know, it's like some people think we make bank on this thing. And I go, everything in this event comes out of my pocket. Right. Exactly. You know, yeah. it's just this year I was happy that, you know, Gary Land, love him from Homesick volunteered to help out you know and got oh me the wow t- he did the t-shirts for me this year and i was oh, like thank sweet. you man you're a lifesaver that's a big yeah that's a you big know? And stress then, off you know the bib prices went through the roof you know this year so i was like can you help me and he goes no he says we're struggling to get the bibs for our event so i went well so i went out in the archives and started digging through my bins of old you know bibs from the last couple of years and i went yeah i got enough to run this event this year sick so we we had like three years of, of you know three years with all the different you know events back and forth and so trying to make sure there was no you know, double numbers, you know, you know, it was like duels. I was like, wait a minute. Okay. We'll just put an A on that one. So, um, but we found enough of those. So everybody was happy. You know, it's like nobody cared. So what about a, a corporate sponsor? That kind of thing. Doesn't I've seem, tried a couple of yeah. times and they're just like, yeah, yeah. But what kind of, what their main thing is 
how much TV coverage can you get? Right, right. You right. know, or internet coverage or anything like that. Yeah, and I where's was just like, the, hey, how many clips are they? You know, I be? go, we're a ground roots, you know, grassroots, grassroots, and, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. deal here. It's, yeah. We're home funded, <laughs> me. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, well, thank you for that. Because this <laughs> event, I've been to a lot of events. Yeah. And this is the event I would want to go to. Oh, yeah, I, I would yeah. choose this over. It's the only one Pretty like much it, anything. you know, anywhere, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. you never know who's going to show up too. Yeah. Well, you know, you, I invite, got... you know, I just throw out the invite and go, Hey, you know, come out. And then, you know, for the inductions, for the legends, you know, it's, it's like, are you going to make it? You know, it's just like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to go and make a, you know, get your plaque and all this stuff and, 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 and publicize, you know, Hey, so-and-so's coming and, you know, and then you don't show up. So I go, then you're really going to get roasted. You know, and I'll just bring somebody up as a, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a, you know, a doppelganger on the stage and we'll, we'll mask them up like you and then we'll just rip them. So. <laughs> wow. What's the first event you ever did? Uh, snowboarding? Yeah. Uh, 83 Worlds. That was the only one, that was really the only one that I ever competed in. Um, I got 17, 17th in the Worlds. And then you got 17th at the I was first ranked, I was in, ranked in 17th in the world. So to Springs. Uh, in 83. Yeah. I was ranked 17th in the world standings at that event. That's amazing. So, and then the next uh, 84 and 85 worlds, I wound up getting injured. The 84 worlds, we were doing coin op over at Boreal, and I was smoking Tom every run. And I was nice. like, dude, I'm taking the money That's this year. That's a claim right I'm, there. Yeah, I was, take, I, was ta- I was going, I'm taking all the money, dude. You're not getting the purse this year. <laughs> yeah. So... Incidentally, I, I swear somebody moved a fucking gate on me because I was on autopilot. You know, we did like t- about 20 laps. Yeah, and I was dude. like autopilot all the way yeah. down. So he goes, yeah, let's do a couple more. And I went down there and I hooked a gate at full speed and got Oof. an elbow in the ribs and broke all the ribs on one side. That's not good. And then he was happy. He was you know, not happy, but he was, you know, he, he drove me to the ER and sat with me and commiserated with me. And then he, and I, could, I could kind of hear the chuckle. You know, that, yeah, I get to keep the money now, so. <laughs> he won. So yeah. Who, yeah. who won 84? Tom? No. No. Uh, Kidwell was Kidwell. overall in 84 and 85. He yeah, was the both, overall champion. Both, so. right. He was the precursor for Kelly. He was yeah. the he was the template that Kelly was following. Yeah. Become yeah. the world yeah. champion. Yeah. In, at the overall world champion, not just, just one yeah. event. Yeah. It well, wasn't just, until okay. Yeah. Okay, here's a... Trivia question. Who was the first world half pipe champion ever? And everybody thinks it's somebody, but it's not. Well, I would think it was TK. No, obviously. it's never TK. TK was the second world champion. This is a little kid called Hargrave. There was two Hargraves brothers, and one of them won the world championship that year. Oh, wow. But you got to look at the judges were, were uh, cafeteria workers and a couple of ski patrol guys that they dragged out to, to judge it. And they'd never seen snowboarding before. Right, right. And, and Tom's trying to explain to them what snowboarding is all about. And you just see their eyes roll back in their heads. You know, I, I, you know what? I love the <laughs> layman take on I, – I was beside my friend who no skateboarding experience at all. Yeah. And I was at the Slam City Jam event, which yeah. Dawn did actually yeah. up in Vancouver. And my friend Jay Rennix, I said to him, "What do you think these tricks are called? Like, let's let's see." And the only one I remember that he did, <laughs> someone did, you know, a big backside air off like a launch ramp, like a yeah. like a Mike Vallely super method. Yeah, he goes, "That looks like that would be called a pointer hang on." Yeah, <laughs> pointer hang on. I was like, "That's incredible." Mm. I like the layman, like they, you know. That's why backflips and 360s are doing so well in the natural selection tour because yeah. you're televised to everybody. They can understand going yeah. upside down. Yeah. They're like, I don't normally go upside down. I yeah. could turn around 360 in my yeah. normal life, but upside oh, yeah. down never happens. Yeah. So you, you could, you know, Jimmy talked about it yesterday. You, If you were professional at snowboarding yeah, in, and you wanted to win, yeah, you found out what the judges needed and you did that no no i'd always i'd always have judges meeting and i'd go look this is what's going down i go um after during one one season one particular season in the early years and i was like i'm like how can we how can we up the ante or up up the you know the level of competition you know and make it because i go this is fucking boring it's like watching skateboarding in a half pipe Mm. Hmm. You know, and I go, look, I, I was at the writer meeting. I go, look, guys, this let me level with you. 
I go, you blindfold all the judges, you tell them what tricks are going down, and 99.9% of the time, the judges will tell you who that rider is mm. just by the tricks. And they the, know and, their run. Yeah, we know. Todd we Richard knew. still knows that now yeah. to this day. Yeah, by the third contest, yeah. we could be blindfolded and tell, you know, and, and just go, okay, backside seven, frontside five, you know, McTwist, you know, it's like, okay, Hawk and Flip, you know, it's like, Okay, yeah, that's right. That's who that is. I go, that's Hawkins. That's, you know, that's Jimmy Scott. Oh, that's, that's Jimmy. That's, that's Terrier. You know, it's like, yeah. uh, that's Brushy, you know, Daniel Frank, you know, it's like <laughs> Ingmar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's just like, what? You know, and was, I'm just like, I go, the best thing you can do is I go, learn your, when you're training, do your event, do your run one way, do it backwards. Sure. Start with the other trick and then yeah. end with the big yeah. trick. The Jimmy, other way, Jimmy heard that and yeah, did that. and he he took it to heart, right? You right, know, and a few right. of the other riders did too, and you saw the level come up more. Yeah, yeah, we get you know it was like technically, but difficulty wise. So then you've got guys like Palmer who are probably a thorn in your side as a judge and a <laughs> event rider, a, 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 an event manager, yeah. that are just saying, but my one air is better than. Like this shit's yeah. so small. Yeah. Like I don't want to see fourteen tricks. I'm gonna do yeah. three, and they're gonna be fucking yeah. huge. Yeah. And there well, is a philosophy that you could reward that, and oh, yeah. and that would also push it in a yeah. other direction. Yeah. yeah. Well, I always told them I go the higher the amplitude, the bigger the degree of difficulty. Right. And that was true. You know, yeah. you could do like a lowly three sixty, but if you're doing you're doing a fifteen foot method, you know, tweaking it out and landing it clean. Yeah. That's better. Right, right. You know, it's like I don't care if it's a three sixty. You know, even if it's a backside three. Right, right. You know, and the and the whole thing with the Palmers is that well, you're still in the contest, yeah. right? Because there's a whole other level of people that yeah. just didn't buy into contests whatsoever. Like, why yeah. are we ranking these things? Yeah. But then you know the sponsors need to. Who do we sponsor? Yeah. You want to sponsor the guy that's doing yeah. the best shit, and so yeah. in the early days it was all tied to contests. Yeah. You know, All the photos were from contests. Yeah, was, we had uh, we had Swatch what, from eighty six to eighty eight. Yeah, but after eighty eight, we were no longer cutting edge. That's incredible. That's what Swatch told us flat really? out. They told us in our face we were no longer cutting edge. They're after French? three years. Is that right, French? I don't know Swatch? what is. They're you Europeans. Know, you know, they just we were at the that's meeting. Fucked up. We were at the the meeting after eighty eight was over. And, you yeah, know, at, at Brack. You yeah, know, and they're like, yeah. oh, you're no longer cutting edge. And, 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 and like, so it's TDK that comes in. Yeah, yeah which they, they, most they, people wouldn't know was like a tape company, wasn't yeah, it? We're just like set tapes. We're like, who is this? What is this? And we're like, we want the Swatch watches. You know, it's just like watch, a, you know, yeah. it's like an eighty eight. Everybody had was making belts and suspenders and yes. necklaces. Yes, and, you yes. know, they had like Jacoby was the worst man. He had him. He had lot, almost like a shirt made out of them, you know, all connected <laughs> together. We're like, dude, this is too much, you know. This is you, know, you look up and it's like, okay, I take you know. And everybody had like a case of different swatches. Yeah, yeah. You know? Those days were <laughs> there was money getting thrown at events, yeah. at riders. Yeah, uh, there was new gear every year. There was leaps and bounds in mm -hmm. uh, resort acceptance. Yeah. Did you see this all coming like in the early days, like in 83? Are you going, it was, oh, we're going to get here. We're going to get to. I knew we'd get there, but, yeah. you know, it was just, it was trying to figure out how fast we're going to get there or how slow we're going to get there. And it's just like certain areas were a little more resistant to our proposals and propositions that we wanted to do. Yeah. And what we wanted to do on their mountain and how we wanted to treat their mountain. And it's just, and they were, you know, they had heard, heard horror stories about the, the little rugrats, you know, the, chaotic you know cruising down and slapping people you know in the air with their tail of their boards sure and, and sure. slashing them and you know spraying them and everything else and going eh, and flipping yeah. them off and shit yeah. so i'm like it's snowboarding man and that was what was going on yeah and that was you know that jumping was, on the roof with yeah. sliding the snow making yeah, you know, like equipment. when craig jumped off the roof at, at op pro and got arrested and he got arrested yeah you know and burton had to come bail him out so you know yeah, that's unbelievable. You know, shit like that. And I go, God, you know, this is one of the best writers in the world, and he's doing this and getting arrested. And I was like, where's Palmer? You know, I go, wait a minute. I go, I go, is, is Palmer's, like, angst and, you know, and, and swagger starting to play off, you know, on, on Craig? And it's like, yeah, you know, sometimes you'd see that. You know, you'd see that come out. Oh, of course. You know, when we were in Voriaz, you know, he got a little crazy there in Voriaz when we were in 89. 
Yeah. We were over there and I was like, wow, there's the other side of Craig. Okay. Elmer. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah, I love watch it. Watch out for Elmer, man. He's coming out. You know, it's, it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Elmer. So what, <laughs> what were the highlights for the Tahoe area? Like what, what events stand out that where it was like, we're at the cutting edge of snowboarding and this is just, this is the showcase of Tahoe. Um, well, the biggest thing was the, the first three Sims Worlds mm-hmm. just started off. You know, nobody had ever done that before. And Tom and and, and uh, nobody nobody even knew what a half pipe was. Right. In the beginning, you know, just Burton wanted to ban. They wanted to boycott. Do you know anything about the about the Jake Tom thing? <laughs> like the, the alleged story that Tom told Jake, oh, we're not going to have a half pipe. And then Jake showed up, and there was a half pipe, and he's like, "But he said," and he just looked like, you know, the lameo. Yeah, well, Tom, yeah, you know, Tom being Tom, you know, he probably would have told him, you know, just to just make sure he came out. Right. He Bring just your guys. To, he just it's wanted to come world. out here, and then he go, "Oh, yeah. by the way, we have a half pipe." <laughs> you know, as soon as they showed up, you couldn't miss it. Right. You know, it's like right, right there, boom. Right. Know? Yeah, so, Donna told it like as though Jake got out there, and he would, felt betrayed. But he yeah. also probably felt embarrassed, right? Yeah. Because here's yeah. this whole other yeah. thing. And then yeah. he's like he he yeah. can't contain himself from from you know, complaining just, about it. Yeah, I had to be I had to play good guy mediator in between them. You did. Yeah, yeah. I had to jump in the middle. You yeah. Know? I just didn't want to see anything fist flying or anything like that. They were know? close, so, right? Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah how... but you know, but both of them they both trusted me and they knew me and you know, it was just like I'm like, hey, you know, let's step back a little bit and discuss this you know normally you know in a low voice without raising our voices and screaming and throwing shit and, you know and it's uh, you know that's fine then that's when we started the overall of course you, know, you had to do everything you had to do the pipe you, you, had, had, to. Do, you had to do the pipe you had to right. do the slum and then you had to do the downhill you know and what year is that is that 83 83 that was 83 that's it so that's yeah. that makes sense like that yeah. that that uh, yeah you know because that would burn jake to the point where yeah. he's like fuck this guy we're gonna bury him yeah and that was his mo yeah. for you know yeah, the well, next tom, 10 years tom for like about a year or two before the 83 worlds was like what can we do for an event to bring snowboarding to the forefront mm-hmm. you know and then so in 82 i had mile high ramp in the backyard and tom, tom would come up and look at that and you could see the gears turning yeah you know and he's like hmm, skateboard snowboarding uh snowboard half pipe you know kind of riding away locked in you know and then he kind of thought about it and then he would come up and toss ideas at me you know i'm like I'm like sure let's fucking do it yeah you know yeah so then he was like okay you know so how are we going to design this and i'm like well we need a snow cat first to dig it out yeah you know and then i go the rest is going to be shovel and rake work you know and a lot of bodies yeah so we went up there and rode uh with uh, mike Hendricks. Who so Mike Hendricks is the three of us that dug the first half pipe. You so it was Thomas Tom. and the cat. Oh, Mike was driving or Mike oh, Hendricks was driving the cat. Wow. He was he was uh, uh, Soda Springs mountain manager and, and cat driver. And then I'm I'm the guy walking walking the tail line, you know, up the side of the pipe, smacking chunks and everything else, and then trying to you know make some shape to it. Yep. So we spent a whole day digging this thing out. You think that could be the first half pipe for snowboarding ever made? Yeah, it was. Has it was. To be. It was. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. nowhere else that somebody no, did that. We had the first one. Yeah. Colorado was like a year or two later. You know, I think I was Colorado back there. It was like a year. It was like eighty four, eighty five. They popped up with theirs, but we beat them. So at Breck or somewhere? I, no, it wasn't Breck. It was um, Arapahoe Basin or something. Might have been. Might have been right. But it was. You know, theirs was ugly as hell. So well, I, I so I got in at eighty eight. So the, the yeah. late eighties traveling. Yeah, that's when everything went to Breck and you know yeah. and everybody wants to talk to Pro Tour and they right. wanted to go global and you know Europe and Japan and back and forth and right you know yeah I remember going to half pipes and then being like well that's not really a half pipe you know more of no a, it's just more well if you look ditch. if you look at the, the 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 flyer for the first one it's called a half pipe ditch gully half pipe ditch gully yeah that's what it was it was a gully. In yep. a ditch, and we dug a half pipe out of it. <laughs> I love it. It's yeah, great. that's what it was. And Tom, Tom, you know, that's the way he put it out, you know, to the media. Yeah, yeah. 
everything. And everybody's like, what's a half pipe ditch gully? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, man, let's just shorten it to half pipe. You know, it's like, well, this is. You know, we know to, what it is. Yeah, right, we know. Right. We all know what it is. We They're all, the ones yeah, that are clueless. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like, what's the, you know? <laughs> so then, you know, and then I was the leg man for all the three worlds because Tom was, you know, he was down Santa Barbara or off somewhere else. So he'd send me all this stuff and he's like, okay, make sure the media gets all this. So I'm like running around. You know, the the TV, you know, uh, stations and radio stations and uh, newspapers and stuff, passing out stuff. Guerrilla style, like showing up and going, hey, yeah, did you know you the know, world champions of snowboarding? Yeah, you know, I'm putting Is, posters yeah, up everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like that. And they're like, and you are. You know, it's like, <laughs> okay, fine, you know. but uh, How did you get into snowboarding in the first place? What was your... Tom. Yeah. Through Tom. Yeah, because I knew him through skateboarding from, you know, years. Uh, what was the transition first, Tom, from skateboarding to snowboarding? Like, was there some overlap there where he's still running sim skateboards and then the snowboards are coming out? Oh, they were both, there... Yeah, they were both together there for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah there was like some time where. But like, uh, from what I understand, Tom got beat out by Dorfman pretty badly in skateboarding, right? Like as it transitioned into that yeah. 80s. Whiteboard well, when, when, graphic. When Dorfman bought the license, and then Tom was, you know, you know, Tom was a businessman, but Dorfman was more crafty, so and more treacherous. So <laughs> that's a so, great word. Yeah, he was very. Yeah, he was. He knew what was going on, how to how to get around stuff and get around people a lot. So right, but uh, you know, they're just. They're, uh, there was like at the open, they would make these funny stickers every year at the open, and there were one of them was "Honk if Dorfman still owes you money," <laughs> oh, and that was that was uh, that was aimed at the team guys. Sure, because he didn't he, half the time he was you know he wouldn't pay him on time or like he owed him money or shit. That's what led to the Craig Kelly court case. Yeah. Dorfman, not Tom. Tom had Tom had done a weird. Yeah. Um, uh, contract with Craig where he said, I want you to sign a lifetime contract to me. Yeah. No matter what company I'm representing, you're coming with me. And Craig was like, I don't know if I want to do that. Actually, I don't know if Craig signed that or not. I think that's yeah, what Craig signed. I don't, I don't think he, I don't think he went that far. I think he only went to like a limited Okay. on that, but he, he wanted, you know, cause he had the engineering background Yep. and that was key back yep. then for design. Yep, and he you was know. pushing for a Craig model. Yeah, I know. I have the only one, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seeing that yesterday was just such a mind blower. Yeah, and then unless there's a few others floating around that I don't know about. Well, that's there the can't only be one a I, number one. Yeah, this there is, can't yeah, be more is, number yeah, one. This is CK number one on it, yeah, and, it's, yeah. and I remember seeing it in, in Tom's office, and he was, and when Craig left, he was going to chop it up and burn it, and I told him, no, 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 no. He right, some, right, you know, right. someday, maybe, you know. So Tom was mad. because oh, he was he because mad. He was you know, livid. He was ballistic. He wanted to put a contract on him. It's just like, it's like, wow. I go, Tom, I go, every time it's like, you want to put a contract on somebody. It's like, chill out a little, you know, it's like, okay, just step back, take a breath. You know, it's like, okay, where can we, you know, work it out, work around it, work through it. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've heard so many mixed stories of Tom. If you talk to, if you talk to, uh, to Sean, Sean's like, he gave me everything that I had. We butted heads and we would fight, but he gave me yeah. everything I had. I have the maddest respect yeah. for Tom. You talk to Ken Ock, and he's stuck in that moment at the eighty five worlds, eighty four or eighty five. Yeah, when they had the fight, where they had, where he just I have threw, it on video. I have you, it on video. You've got that. Yeah, that's epic. And he just swears and freaks like he loses oh, it. No, he just you know it's just Tom's going down the the the, the, the award list and everything else, and we're like all you know drinking beer and sounding like that, and all of a sudden we hear. Oh yeah, he starts to give him the money. He goes, "Oh yeah, by the way, you still owe me three hundred for all the, those boards that I sent you." And then Aki's like, "What?" And he goes, "Oh, I'll just keep this in lieu of that." You know, Aki's like, "Ah!" He just started to jump and, <laughs> and climb, and everybody just jumped up and grabbed it and separated them. You know, it's just sort of like, "Whoa, that's you amazing." Know? And Jake's sitting over at the other table, going, "Okay," <laughs> you know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, because Ken's a gentle Canadian. Yeah. He's not a violent person. No, I just I want to put a contract on his ass too. I want to kill him. <laughs> fucker. At the eighty four worlds, he, he these giant barfoot stickers. I yep. come down off the mountain and my windshield is coated in them. Unbelievable. And been baking in the sun all day. Unbelievable. And I and, and I had glue I had a gluey that I couldn't clean no. up. You know, I finally had to stop at a gas station and, and pour some gas in the cup. 
and then try to wash it off so Took I could forever. get home. So yeah. I couldn't see, you know. Unfreaking like freaking believable. You know, and, and he was chuckling about it the next day at the pipe. Of course, like, of course I'm like, he was. I'm, I'm like, like you're I'm so, gonna kill you. You're so dead. <laughs> you're so dead. You know, and he's just like, mm. you know, but uh, that's hockey. Uh, well, hockey's hockey, so. Yeah, legend. You know, Tom, you know, Tom so many times. Well, they had that war going for years. And then Ken got stuck in the backcountry in France one time uh, later on. Mm-hmm. And they had to helicopter him out. They had to rescue him, helicopter to come get him. Wow! So they gave him a bill for five thousand dollars, and they go. He goes, "Well, I lost my passport and all my ID and everything else, and you know, and we got stuck back out there." So the guy goes, "Oh, what's your name?" And he goes, "Oh, Tom Sims." Tom got the bill for five grand. He went <laughs> fucking nuts. He called me and he goes, "Aki, I want to kill him, oh, motherfucker!" <laughs> my God, what a story! You know, and that's 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 well, that's fucking history, man. So, it's history. That's it. Oh, so the, that the was players just, in it. Oh, and I think I think that actually I think that actually there was a little tidbit in one of the little back things in, in Transworld or something about that that happened. And I was like, oh man, Aki, you better hot. You better leave the country. No, no, no. Just don't show up at a, at a, at a sports show or a ski show or something like that if Tom's around. You better it's run. Trip. So uh, I met Tom at the 94 Trans World Industry Conference. Yeah. Big Sky, Montana. Yeah. He and Chuck were like arm in arm, buddy, buddy. I think yeah. that they had just rekindled their friendship after, you know, yeah. battling it. Barfoot, Barfoot versus Sims was also a thing. Yeah, because they started so close. They lived yeah. in that commune and they together. Split. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, Tom at that time seemed like a very gentle person, like a very, like just a go with the flow, mm-hmm. easy to just like. I imagine that he could schmooze people so easily. He had that California charm. Yeah, and uh, like. I'm really surprised that Sims, with the lead that it had, mm-hmm. wasn't able to just pull it out. Like it was a no, bit of a just, sputter in that middle. That yeah, he he had a lot of bad luck trying to pull in a money sponsor or a backer. You know, Chuck was you know, and, and he was, uh, you know, he was all business when it came to the boards and stuff and the designs and everything else. And that's like kind of where Chucky and him butted heads on designs and stuff. And right. It was like Chucky's design, but Tom would sneak his design out there and it would be identical to Chucky's, and, you know, the whole thing, you know. That, <laughs> that Sims it, half pipe that I'm riding right now yeah. has a very bar foot. <clears throat> yeah. Because you look shape. at the shapes, you look at the old <laughs> shapes with the, you know, the ones that had the bungee cords on them and yep. stuff like that and the swallowtails and everything else. And you see that swept swallowtail. Yeah. You know, and then it's like, uh, that's kind of a bleed over from Chucky's design. You know, it's like, okay, but it's like, was it Tom's surf design or is it Chucky's design? You know, I've or, seen the lines of the Tom design for what would become the kid, yeah. well, and the yeah. FE, yeah. like where he's, there's pencil marks yeah. and protractor circles and deflections and stuff. Yeah. And it looks an awful lot like uh, a, a surfboard blank. You know, yeah. it looked like he had learned shaping from a surf shaper. Yeah, well, they both did. They both had that background, you know, in surfing. So, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just and Chuck just couldn't take it anymore. You know, right. he's a little bandy rooster, man. You just you push him so far, and he's in your face. You know, it's sure. just like you know. And I've seen that so many times, and I was just like, Chucky, man, you're gonna have you know, you just you know, step back, dude. And then when we did the in 2005, when we when we inducted both of them together and there's a photo of me in the middle the middle man and one on each side of me and they're smiling yeah yeah and they actually talked again i got yeah. them back together what year was that 2005 oh wow and they actually chatted after that back you know they com- communicated back together i'm like okay i'm like good yeah wars buried over. the hatchet wars, wars over. over you right. know it's just right. like okay so it was you know were you around when tom and um steve link did the 007 thing yeah, there's a long story about that one too. It so. must have been it must have been pretty much the most exposure that anyone had got. Yeah. Were you guys aware of the Regis Roland um you know uh, apocalypse snow thing that was going on? Yeah. Like you guys yeah. would see that yeah, I'd seen and that. be like, "Wow, that's fucked up. That guy's doing his own thing in a bubble over there." 
Yeah. Like no grabs, just yeah. big drops, blowing yeah. up explosions, being chased yeah. by skiers and monoboarders. What did you guys think of that when you saw it? It's pretty cool. I was like, yeah, that's exciting. You know, it's like, all right, we should do snowboard movies. Yeah, big production. You know, like yeah. that, you know, and then, well, Tom actually called me to be with him first as as the stunt guy. But the the, the I got canceled because they wanted somebody who rode the same. I couldn't ride regular foot. Oh, shit. I could only ride switch or, you know, goofy. Goofy, you're goofy. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, yeah, I got to learn how to ride switch if I'm going to do this. I'm like, no, I can't do it. Because on a round tail, I can do it. I can just you know go switch. It's like no problem. I hear you, but like but with the, we were riding the a swallowtail, yeah. And then plus we had to ride this fucked up thing that they built for us. With the, of, that looked like a ski. Yeah, it was the front a, of a front of a snowmobile. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was it was a, the there was a yeah. runner on a snowmobile, yeah. that, and, and they put bindings on it. You know, it's like, wild. You know, it's and wild. I was like, I go, somebody's going to die with that thing. You know, totally. So I guess. Um, Tom, uh, Tom and Link actually had to train for a while how to ride this damn Fuck, thing and get to work. Would have had Especially to. when he was doing the air shot, you know, the air stuff, and then the pond skim, you know, across. Could you imagine? There's got to be some big production uh, yeah. company that's got that raw footage somewhere. It would be cool to get the yeah. outtakes from yeah, that yeah. because they would they would have had to film for days and days really yeah. to get those yeah. because they get a couple minutes of clips. Like it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot yeah. of footage. That's yeah. cool. So you were a little, were you a little sore on that, or were you? I was, you know, I was kind of irritated at first, and I was yeah. like, yeah, but you know, it's. Just, then he brought Lincoln, and I was like, yeah, okay, that's cool, you know. It's like and Link, at least he used to babysit him back in New Jersey. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like, it's like fine, cool, you know. Then, then until he sent me the, the 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 postcard from Italy, you know, with the with the the, the, the strippers and shit on the cover and stuff <laughs> like that. Oh like God. it was, yeah, you know, Steve and I are having a great time. Wish you were here, and I'm like, fucker. <laughs> I never thought about this, but that doing that movie would have financed the next year of Sims for him. Mm. That, oh, yeah. would have, that would have been so that he didn't have to bring on money. Because the real problem with producing snowboards is that each unit costs you a lot of money. And yeah. it costs you money up front because you have to build the physical thing. And then mm -hmm. you send it out to someone. They get 90-day terms or whatever to sell yeah. it and send you your money. So there's this time period where if you sell too much, you can't afford to make it. Yeah, and so now you got to bring in somebody for money. And now, if you're if you wind up with a Dorfman or a Jamie Salter, you lose control of your creative and your company. Oh, yeah. You lose yeah. control of your profits and your ability yeah. to do next year. I think Tom still had a little clause in there with his licensing agreement with Dorfman, to where he still had pretty much the final say on designs and you know on the R and D stuff. You yeah. know, at least Dorfman allowed him that, you know. And then plus he had, you know, he had Klum and, and a few of the other guys, you know, and Grell and everybody working, at, you know, in the shop down there too, which kind of oversaw, you know, Dorfman so he didn't really fuck it up too bad. You know, yeah. it's like, this is the design, this is the way it should be, these are the graphics and stuff. And, Was Brad Stewart there at that time as well? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've got this kind of dream team of snowboard royalty that's all yeah. in this one spot and yeah. they're all working on this one company that yeah you know to a guy who comes into it in 88 that history is we're not looking backwards so i didn't know yeah but yeah. basically they were that was it you could Those have called it sims boarding yeah they knew what's up yeah they, they had they had the vision they had the you know what they wanted to see you know further down the road you know it's like hey let's start you know let's let's do a couple of you know tests on this do some betas and you know, I'll throw them there. It's like, okay, fine. It's like, this one works, this one won't. You know, side cuts and the whole thing. I think and Jake's look. going to Europe. You know, it was like he he kind of did the bamboo thing where you grow the roots underground. Like, so yeah. he was losing to Tom in North America big yeah. time. But he was gaining this kind of European sensibility and the old croonyism of skiing to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. to, to align himself with the mafia that is 100 years of okay. skiing. Yeah. That's my guess. Yeah. Do you got to go? Or no, 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 no. I okay. just, it's fine. I'm just yeah. like, I'll, I'll take that later. Um, is Jake, it, Jake? I didn't know anything about the old ski. Um, I don't want to call them cartels, but that's what they were. They were yeah. like, the, these are old family run businesses that are in cahoots with the re ski resorts. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of money being made yeah. and they don't want to be, they don't, if they don't want to be disrupted. Mm -hmm. So when Jake goes over there and does a partnership in Austria, yeah. he actually did the thing that 
that might be what happened for for Tom was that he just didn't embed himself with the right manufacturer. Yeah, he would start out okay and then find some people and then I don't know where what happened with they would just kind of like yeah okay and then a while later they go nah we can't really do this. Right, and it you could know, and be, be it, like it could even be that you know they don't get all their money and he could just jump to another factory yeah. and make a bit more in profit by yeah. not paying off the last invoice yeah. or whatever mm. and just go well yeah. this these guys actually you know that italian yeah. uh manufacturing place that made the fakies yeah. and the and the uh the noahs yeah that was those were skookum boards those are really nice yeah and they ended up umbro they ended up owning the the licensing at some point probably because they were owed a bunch of money for the boards that they made that's yeah. my guess yeah uh, that's <laughs> yeah once they you know after the dorfman era it was kind of like uh, you know i kind of like walk you know walked away from it and you know it was like you know i chat with tom every once in a while or see him at the ski show or something if i was down there and it's just like we just kind of went our own ways you know until later you know and then we hooked back up in 2012 you know, I'm like, hey, Tom, man, 30th anniversary of the first Worlds is coming up, the first half pipe. You know, dude, we got to do something. You know, we're, so we're going to do it with our event. Sick. You know, so we chatted back and forth on the phone. I was like, I was picking his brain. And then he got really excited. You know, he's just like, yeah, yeah, we got to do this. And he's like, you know, and then in December, he passed away. You know, and I was like, oh, fuck. You know, I go, well, there goes the contest. So I go, well, I had a verbal okay from him. Yeah. You know, and I got a hold of Hillary and I says, hey, you know, I had a verbal from Tom. And he was going to come up, you know, and and be here for it. Quite the whole excited thing. I go, this is it, the yeah. you know Tom Sims Retro Worlds. Yeah, you know, and then we turned it into a memorial event. Yep. So, uh, you know, she's okay, fine, you know. And then she got into the with me for the you know the the the, the branding trademark. You know, thing. I'm like, yeah, fine, okay, as long as we don't go overboard, you know, the whole thing. And then they they started making the, the with uh, winter, uh, not winter stick, uh, never summer. Giving an overall a custom, you know, one, you know, one of six or seven or eight or whatever um, boards with that logo on it, and had the Sims on the bottom. Sick, you know. So we started doing that every year. So every year we'd have the new logo, the event logo would be on that, which we'd make that many boards. And the, whoever won won that division, you know, men or women or you know, legends or opens or juniors, even the juniors, you know. And I wanted to keep that taste and aspect of the event like tom had back in the day you know we had you know uh, we had like age groups you know it's like uh you know over and under and stuff like that and then he always had a junior amps division so it was like the juniors could come up and they could ride with their peers sick and learn from their peers and i wanted to keep that going bostick told me that he was in the he was the first men's masters champion or something and you know what the masters cutoff was age-wise I don't know. So I was the first world masters champion. So it was twenty seven. <laughs> he was saying he was. I was thirty six. <laughs> Jesus. So masters now is over fifty. Yeah. We've. We, yeah. yeah it what just, it, what it meant to be a fifty year old back then, and yeah. what it is to be. I'm fifty yeah. right now. Yeah. Like I'm riding eighty well, days I, a season. Still. I didn't learn how to do, how to do uh, a rodeo or a misty until I was fifty five. That's fucking awesome. You know, but That's I won't awesome. do them unless it was like powder. Sure, sure, you know, I sure. Go, it's hard pack. Fuck off, man. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, my body. I was like, no, 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 no. I don't heal that quick. <laughs> That's per- That's a pretty rad claim, man. Because I learned Misty's. I would have been twenty. I would have been like yeah. twenty, twenty one, yeah. twenty two. Yeah. And and then that was it. Rodeo was the one that got me. I couldn't do a rodeo. Yeah. Rodeos was sweet to me. I was like, that was like no brainer. Yeah. Like, your whoop, body whoop, just whoop. goes that way. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you luck out, and that's, yeah. you know, and then it got to the backside rodeo 90 rolls and i was just yeah like, i just i got yeah, I my cut off of my cut off was trying to learn them switch so yeah i was like yeah after i get up and like oh i think i need some you know uh like a gallon of a leave and you know <laughs> like i don't know like 26 packs and you know and an iv so i was like no no, no i'll just do them straight so who is your unsung hero who's the underrated person didn't get their due For the legends, you know, like for people around here, people in town. Around here, unsung is Mike Bassage. And then he's 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 getting a lot of dues now and everything he's, else. But, yeah, 
you know, coming through the 90s and stuff, mm -hmm. he got robbed so many times. You know, he was so much better than, than some of the other people, like the uh, Davos World Championships. Mm -hmm. um, Terrier fell twice. And I got overruled because I was the only U.S. judge there, and I went ballistic. And and Bassett's, Mikey's run was awesome. Flawless. And he stomped everything. Oof. And he got second. Terrier won. And the, the Euro judges were like, yeah, but he went so much bigger. And I'm like, he fucking fell. Yeah. Yeah. I don't give a shit. You don't fall and win the contest unless Can't everybody else fall. in that final right, falls. Right, right, You know, and everybody else didn't fall. Right. Terrier fell, but because he was Terrier, you know, so. Wow. And they were just like, I'm like, okay, I'm over it, you know, so like that, so. Mikey Bassich is one of the nicest you know, people I just, I've ever met. I just go, met, you know, too. I saw him later you know, after he got off the podium, like, just, you know, I was like, hey, dude, you won, you know. I go, and he, he just got a big grin. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jimmy Scott said something I've never heard before yesterday, which should be said all the time. He said, I've won contests I shouldn't have, yeah, and I haven't won contests that I should have. yeah, And that's the way that competitive anything is, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. I've never competed at any, like, I mean, this is my level here. Yeah. Is everybody smiling? Yeah. Everybody's having a good time. Oh yeah, that's um, why I, that's why I love it. You know, it's when I you know got in. You know, you can thank Paul Alden for me getting into judging. You know, because nice. that was the '88 Lamar incident. And he goes, "You want to change shit? Judge." So I go, "Okay, I'll see you next year." That's a that is a pivotal moment. I go, he threw the gauntlet down. History. I picked it up. That's right. You know, so I'm like, "Fuck you!" I'm gonna you know I'm gonna get in there. I go, every one of those guys on that podium is a rep for a company. You know, and they and all they see is their homeboys, you know, homies, you know. Right. And I go, all I want to see is a bib number. Yep. And that's the way I ruled it after that. I go, you know, I go, I don't want to see names. All I see is bib numbers. Right. You know, and I go, the announcers can be doing the names and everything else, sure. but I want these guys concentrating on their, you know, their timer or their score sheet or anything like Rider that. Or 73 is coming through. And I'm now. like, pay attention. Yep. What's going on in the pipe? You know, yep. not, not who's calling this guy's name or this thing like that. Right. <clears throat> so I kind of, when I trained all the judges, that's what I ingrained in them. I was like, don't be looking at what the name is or anything like that. I go, I want to be the fairest and most impartial you can be. You are a judge. You know, you're supposed to be apolitical, not do you political. Think, do you think there was ever any bribery in the judging? You think anybody ever came in with money? And probably. Like, yeah, probably. probably. You know, you in a few contests, I kind of, you know, gave him the, you know, the stink eye. You know, it's like. Did okay. anyone ever approach you? Like, Jake ever go like, Chantry, you. The, if, if, no, no, no. There's Jake, some good Jake money. And I were, you know, yeah. Jake and I were cool. We were tight. We were tight, yeah. You know, well, that, running the Open event, you know, as the head judge. Yeah. He just yeah. let me have a free hand. Yeah. You know, until 98, which was like the fiasco. And I just, I retired after that. So What's the fiasco of 98? Let's that was. That uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I want to. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's let's talk it out. <laughs> so, um, that was the uh, the the ninety eight U S Open. We're at the we're we're done with the qualifying. Uh, Terry A's in nineteenth place. He's down at the bar getting hammered. Um, I got a hair a hair that and I just went. I called Jake and I says, Hey, um, with this level and at and we were done so early, and I go with this level of of you know competition right now. The amount of people here, let's open it to the top twenty. Three runs, best of. So so Jake's like, you think? And I said, yeah. He says, we got enough time. I go, the judges are cool with it. So okay. So we sent somebody. We sent the ski patrol down to get Terrier. I get the phone call. Terrier's like, you can't change the rules. I go, I'm not changing them. I'm bending them. And I go, plus, I got the okay from Jake. He says, it's fine. So he's like, mm -hmm, come back. Well, he was just dorking around in the pipe and the qualifying just to see, you know, and there's, there's a lot over a, a lot of years and a lot of contests we would play a game, him and I, to see what he could get away with in the pipe for a score. So I'm like, okay. And I'm like, fine. And I was always truthful with his scores. And I go, this is what you deserve, you know. It's yep. like, you know, either put up or shut up, you know. And he would throw down a stock you know, or a semi-stock run to see if he could make the finals. And if he did, then he would, and then, then you'd see the show. Right. You know, but if he didn't, he's like, I'm, okay, I'm gone. I'm going to the bar. <clears throat> so he yelled at me for 20 minutes on the phone. And then he finally, I go, oh, well, okay, fine. You can be 19th place or you can be first. And he came back and fucking won. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, and I'm like, dude, you know. 
So what's the fiasco part of it? Just it that was, was because the um, I had a I had a problem with my judges, and there was a little rebellion. A couple, you know, the East Coast oh. boys, and, you know, the Jersey, you know, posse and shit like that. So I was trying to shut that down. And then, as a head judge, I can change the score. I can say no. I want two points off. I go, that's too high. Drop it down. Wow. You know, like that. Yeah. And I can do that. I can overrule. That's them. some godlike. And I, fucking and I shit did. Right and there. I did. And I go, that's you know. And it's just actually what I was wrong. It was Terry didn't win. He didn't win. He was second place by two tenths. And these guys had him. You know, he did the score, but that was when, um, shit, who was it? Um, God, Rob King, King, King won. Kinger, Kinger won. He just threw King the won. sickest nine hundreds. You know, back to back. So stuff. it was the innovation. Yeah, here you know, comes it was Rob just like King that. And Terry was yeah, like, you yeah. know, he had he had the big, you know. He was still Terry, eh? He had the big pop tarts and stuff shit. like that, yeah. but he was, you know, it was kind of like lackadaisical were... on the on the hawk and flip and stuff like that. Yeah. So I went, you know, and like, and so I just took a poll and I said, okay, well, who who thought who won? So it was like Kinger, Kinger, Terry, 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 and I was like, mm, okay. So I'm the deciding vote. I'm like in Congress. I'm the deciding. Just you know, it's like okay. And then I split the vote. So I went, look, this is you know, this is I go, this is bullshit. So like that. But our tabulator, who was a blabbermouth. She ran out after that and just told the world, you know, that I fucked Terry. Collusions coming. I screwed yeah, Terry yeah, out, yeah, of, yeah, out yeah, of winning yeah, and the whole yeah, thing yeah, and like yeah. that. And I go, no, I didn't screw anybody. I think I go, Terry got, was where he should have been. Second. You know, second place. I go, he, he showed us what he had. And Kinger just had, you know, three awesome runs. One of them, of which was stellar. Yeah. You know, and he was just overjoyed. One of them like, won the contest. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, yeah. fine. You know, it's okay. Yeah. Like, okay. So after that, you know, it's like. That sounds like. Yeah. And then Jake called me about yeah. a month later and he goes, mm, we had a little too much, you know, you know, I'm like, okay, fine. You know, he says, let's, let's chill for a couple of years and see where it goes. I'm like, fine. Okay. You know, if you want me to come back, I go, you know, that's cool. You know, so everybody else. I stand behind my decision. Yeah. Everybody still stood yeah. the story. And I yeah. go, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the lightning rod. I'm the guy that's making the big bucks and making the decisions <laughs> and stuff. So yeah, it's, you know, the, the buck stops here. That's amazing. You know, I took, you know, I took the criticism and everything else. I went, thank you very much. Yeah. You know, hey, thanks for letting me, you know, be part of this event for 10 years or you know, 12 years. It's a little more difficult to do when you're first new at it than when, when you're the yeah. old. Yeah. You know that people are going to complain yeah. no matter what. Yeah. You, you once know. you've got twelve years, but you know every decision yeah. you make, yeah. people there's going to be a contingency of people that yeah. are like, "The fucking judging sucked." Oh yeah, I should have won. He should have won. They should have won. No, no, this guy, just, that guy. You know, right, just, right, right. I always try to keep the innovation into it. You know, it's just like okay, let's keep it fresh. You know, front ways, back ways. You know, start in the middle and go both ways from your run or something like that. And it was like that keeps the judges riveted. You watch the NST. You watch the the Natural Selection Tour at all? I watched a couple of them. They were pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. The judging gets a lot of criticism. Yeah. Well, just I was not a fan of the Olympic judging. So Uh, or Olympic judging too, right? Yeah. The 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 teams that they brought in were not their top levels. Yep. And I was like. So where is so and so? Where is so and so? Where is so and so? I go. I trained them. Yeah. You know. I go. Those guys were Olympic level. They should be here. You, you know, trained Chad Otterstrom by any chance? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. All you these did. guys. And, yeah. and the and then my partner in training. You know, uh, Greg Johnson. You know. And, uh, you know, we were you know the the two top head judges. You know, in the tour because he was, he he was with me. And USASA, and then he went over to FIS, you know, when they were starting the Olympic, you know, poll and everything else. Yeah. And FIS wanted me badly. Of course they did. Because I was the national freestyle director for USASA, and I trained all their judges and the whole thing. So all they wanted was my notoriety. Yeah. You know, and prestige. Right, because as soon as you sign off on it, then it's the yeah, whole. Yeah, no, no, no. We'll see what we did. What we everybody. did was. I was the liaison. I wound up being the liaison between USASA and FIS. There you go. So I did not sign anything. You know, they paid me to do all this stuff, but I wasn't their boy. You know, I spoke my mind, you know, which is what I always did. Bertrand Devernote talked about a a meeting with someone from the IOC or FIS just saying, like, you guys are done. You guys are done. This is where we're we're, we'll take it from here. No, it's just the they... They're, they were so bass backwards 
in accepting anything. Everything was on a six-year program for them. And they had to do so many beta programs and so many tests and shit. It was like, okay, well, let's see. It's on probation. And if it runs good for five years, then we'll, in the sixth year, we'll vote on it, yes or no. And I'm like, and, and Greg and I had all these judging formula, formulas to make it really super quick and fast and exciting yeah. and everything else. And they just sat on it. And they're like, no, we don't want to do that, you know, the whole thing. And then with my double up that I came up with for to make it fast and crazy. you know, Explain and, the double up. You told that to me this morning. What a what a fun format. Yeah, what a, it was, it's almost you know, like jam format. It, it, it is. It, it is. It, yeah. it's, it's like a mini jam. And, and you know, we were, you know, we, I was doing the free ride tour with ESPN and we were running out of, out of daylight. And, you know, so they were freaking out. The camera guys were going, uh, okay, let me, I go, give me about five minutes to think about it. So I kind of threw a bunch of stuff through my mind and it had always been in there somewhere, jumbling around with this formula. So I came back. So I had a writer meeting with 180 writers. So <laughs> I was like, dudes, okay, you trust me? Fine. You do? Okay. So everybody's like, yeah, okay. So I took the judge, the main judge panel of four judges, split them into two judges and two judges. And what we did is the first guy dropped in the pipe. The second hit, after the sec at the second hit, the next guy would drop in the pipe. The second hit, the next guy would drop in the pipe. The second hit, the next guy would drop in the pipe. And that was it. You would be judged by one team, and then you would judge by the other team, and it would be a combined score, no best of. But you had really – these were good, solid judging teams. They were the best I had. And, uh, you know, and then the, the riders were just like, wow. And they weren't, they weren't freezing. They were getting their runs in, and we had jam format, and it was in heats. So you knew when your heat time started, and we had it regulated time-wise. So it was like you needed to be there at that time. What they about if someone falls? Because that is going to fuck you up if somebody fell in front of you. That's fine. Then, you then go the other guy. Then the other guy would go up. They still the, – that judge team was focused on that guy. Yep. You know, and then if he did, then the, the other guy would hold the other guy for another hit and then drop him. Got it. So they had a chance to do their score, and then, you know, so they do a quick score and move it on. It seems like a fantastic way to keep the crowd engaged, keep the competitors oh, going. It. You know, ESPN loved it because yeah. it was like controlled yeah. chaos. You controlled know? Like, chaos, wow, exactly. what's going it's on? Like, you know? Bam, there's another you know? hit. Bam, there's you another know? hit. It's like, bam, there's they've never hit. seen anything like it. You know, it's like, Incredible. like, okay, well, thank you. You know, it's like, okay, fine. You know, and then they wanted to do it, you know, because it, it drew in, we could, we could accept more competitors in the event to qualify. Yep. You know, so you, okay, yeah, you want to pay your dollar to come and jump in there and try to make the finals against so and so. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, okay, fine, uh, like that, you know, and then Jake, push Jake, innovation. And then Jake yeah. found out about it. So we started doing it at the Open for the last three years, you know, three or four years that I was at the Open. That's how they ran the Open. Yeah, we did. No, this is like qualifying. Yep. It actually opened up qualifying bigger to so many more people. We would have, you know, I right. had actually had uh, two or three judging teams yeah. those years. Yeah. Yeah, cool. That do that, but what I what I used to do, uh, my it was one of my ideas when I came in to start head judging the open was okay, fine. I go, I want for the AMs because it was the amateur qualifying to get into the open, and there was only twelve spots. So I go, I go, Jake, um, can I grab some of the pros? So I went through and I queried a bunch of the pros, and I, I go, look, this I go, it's going to stoke out the riders more. You're being judged by your peers. Sick. These are pros that are going to be looking at your run, so do your best. Rad. And they actually took the level up. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, um, <laughs> you know, here's Jeff Brushy. He was one of my judges. He loved it. You know, I had I had Trisha Burns. Sick. I always had a girl on there, Christy Elder. Um, God, it was like Max Plosinator from Austria was yep. in there. Uh, Fabian Rohr. You know, I had all oh, yeah. these. I just, I just go by. Oh, I go, you're drafted, you're drafted, you're drafted, you're drafted. And I go, get over to the podium. And I go, it's like, okay. I, you know, it's like, and Jake paid him. So, and, I, and then I would just, I would just go, and he gave me a budget. So I'd go over and just get heavy swag food and shit in the boot. We were just like living the life. And I'm like, okay, just stay focused. You know, I, I gave him a quick course, crash course on what to do and how to score. And they were cool with it. And it was great. After that first year, it was like every year I'd go grab some pros. You know, and then the person, like, hey, can I go judge that too? Like, they thought it was cool. Oh, that's amazing. You know, and every year we would do that. And then the double up, I had to bring in more teams, so we really couldn't do it after that. So, well, that's so this is this is the, the exact thing that people and Terrier is famous for. We're talking about we're going to lose this when we go to a fist format. We're going to lose this. We're going to lose the creativity. We're yeah. going to lose the self 
direction where we can pivot no, you, and change you, you, things. No, it's going to be rigid, freaking yeah. with the blinders on, figure skating. Yeah. Or gymnastics. Hey, the shit's you, amazing to watch. Yeah. I, I, like, when I catch an Olympic highlight reel, yeah. I'm like, that. Ah, wow, that was crazy. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. But when you talk to an Olympic athlete, yeah. they're not Sean Palmer. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. they're training with a with a coach. And you got one or more coaches. and Many coaches. You know. Coaching team, a rehab team, a, oh, yeah. you know, a, oh, a taking, mental, yeah. mental yeah, well, you coach. Just, all you, you have to do everything. is make the team and you're, right. you're taken care of. Right, right. But right. it was, you know, the one of the reasons why I got fired from the first Olympics was – I had, you know, we had a bunch of email, you know, really inflamed emails floating around there on that. My big pick, my big wrinkle in that was we had a signed contract with the organizing committee that for that year, you did three U.S. qualifiers to make the U.S. team. Yes. Okay. Comes December. There's a mandate comes down from the IOC through the ISF or through the FIS. And USSA, no, we don't care about those three. You're still going to have to go to Europe and compete in three or four to get fist points. Right. And I just went, fuck that. Right. I go, these kids went out and raised money, you know, you know, bribed, you know, bargained and, you know, and, and, and you know, blackmailed their way to get the <laughs> cash to get these three events done so they could make the team and get taken care of. Right. Now they got to need twice or triple the money to go to Europe for a freaking month. And do this, I'm like, that's bullshit. You can't break these kids' hearts by doing that. So, <laughs> Jimmy told the story from the other side because what? he he went to the fist events, yeah, and he got the points. So as soon as they made that announcement, Jimmy's like, "All right, here I go. I'm going yeah. there, and I'm I'm getting the points, and I'm getting on the team." Yeah, but a lot of these kids couldn't do it because they couldn't afford it. Right? They and they only had the money to do these three to try and make, make it. He didn't, you know. Make and I go, team. that's heartbreaking. Jeez. Yeah. And I go, you guys are motherfuckers, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, when I went to Lucerne and jumped in Sam Rance's <laughs> face and just like, motherfucker, you know? It's like, okay, I got my pink slip. It's like, fine, adios. I was like, okay. Yeah. I don't want to be know? a part of this anyway. This but is then, bullshit. you know, and, and it, was, it was hilarious because later on, when, um, because uh, I used to design a lot of the, you know, like the parks and shit, you know, yep. work on the design work for USASA and I designed the slope styles and I'd go out, actually, I'd go out a couple of weeks ahead of time and build all the features, yep. you know, for, for nationals, you know, and then I was like, okay, fine. I was like, I was, you know, I was like worked after, you know, four weeks of nationals or like pre nationals and then nationals and stuff. But during the Olympics, and then I'd get a call four in the morning, Mike, come fix the fucking pipe. It sucks. <laughs> and I was like, Dude, oh, no. you got a team over there, and and I got into telling him, um, you guys have the power. You guys have the power. You're the athletes. Without that, they have no Olympics. They have no show. They have no nothing. You got to band together. I go stick together, and just say fuck no. We are not going to ride because this course is dangerous or like that. They finally got the you know it's like in Sochi. Yeah, I got two calls. Yeah, and I go, you know how long it's going to take me to get there? I go by the time I get there. <laughs> They'll be shutting down and having the closing ceremonies and everything else. I go, dudes, you know, it's like that was, what was it? Uh, McBoris got injured, you know, in the training. And then they finally got it pushed through that, you know, the, I go, enough of them got together and went, eh, 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 eh. And the so they finally fixed everything. Yeah. You know, not super, super good, not but they perfect, fixed it enough right. so it was a lot safer than it was. So everybody was a lot happier with it. So I'm like, okay, fine, you know. Events, but, uh, events. And at, at one point, I think. There was a judging program. Somebody Sherry up in Canada was was running it for yeah. the. For oh the yeah, 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 yeah. We did, we did. The, yeah. I worked with her too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> She's a sweetheart. I get it. I know, it. I, know I know, I know. Type of just, we we just we had our own views about what should, yeah. should happen and everything yeah. else. We butted yeah. heads and yeah. stuff, but we I still talked. That. You know, so we I I, we talked at a normal level without screaming. Yeah. So. <laughs> So I went to do the course, and then yeah. I realized this shit ain't for me. I don't want to judge people. Yeah, I want to. I don't want to be in the contest. I want to be riding the mountain. This is too restrictive, you know. Where are we at here? We just did uh, an hour. Yeah, it's eleven. Yeah. All right, let's uh, so, let's call it. That was okay. That was a wonderful, yeah. com smooth Trip conversation. Down memory lane with with absolute legend Mike Chantry. Thank you so much <laughs> for everything you've done over the years. Right. The welcome. N Men documentary and your Mile High Ramp and just 
your integrity in the space has kept us together and now here we've got this event that's yeah that's one of hey, these if i'm above ground and i'm walking we're here every yeah. year so the legend world tour are you endorsing that yeah we're yeah, just kinda. i'd like to see it get bigger me too you know it's just yeah. i got a you know we got a text from uh Borgstead up in alaska they want to do the the challenge the ak challenge, challenge part yeah. of it yeah make it part of it yeah so i'm like fine we can do different things you know it's, it's all about the idea. pipe and the yep. race and the arctic yep. challenge and you know and a few of these other events you know the longboard classic this is what I've been talking about um, just off the top of my head with uh, like having an avenue for uh, guys who rip still like like Todd Richards and yeah. Sean Palmer and Nate yeah. um, to to get sponsors and and have a second heyday. Yeah. Like to actually go out yeah, with people. Second, you know, yeah. Yeah. Because I would watch that. I mean, I grew up in, in Ontario, Canada, and I remember going to a hockey game. And it was an Alzheimer's game. Yeah. And they weren't wearing helmets because fuck mm -hmm. you. We didn't wear helmets back in our day. And they played against <laughs> some of the like youngsters. And it was yeah. a very exciting game. Yeah. It was a really cool thing to watch. And yeah. I think you could get that draw. Yeah. You could This event should have a uh, spectator draw for sure. I'm going to bring a bunch of listeners to the show to this next year. And I'm going to yeah. do it upright. We'll do a yeah. house we'll we'll put a package together where hey come fly in from all over the world we'll hang out together you'll yeah. get to meet people we'll do a meet yeah. with ride with yeah. and then you know because we'll that's yeah. what this event is worthy of like yeah. if i had known that this was going on like this this whole time yeah i i mean i would see the media of it yeah but this <clears throat> is this is this event is much bigger than yeah the media coverage that yeah. it gets that's no, it's just I've it. you know I've talked to a lot of blue in the face with with TV yeah. stations and yeah. everything else and they're yeah. like they're all about the Olympics yeah it's either X Games do tour or the Olympics you know and we're like you know the the redheaded stepchild that's it you yeah. know it's like yeah. uh, okay you know or, or I go to the, and talk to a TV station the gal that covers the Olympics down in the sack and she's like oh that's nice <laughs> you know and I was just like but you got to remember I built the first half pipe with Tom Sims and Mike Hendricks. And I go, that's where the Olympic half pipe came from. So this we broadcast would be telling the stories. So each one of these guys getting on mic in front of a thing, yeah. and it would be a great one hour package yeah. of watching yeah. and real yeah. live action, snowboarding and, and racing yeah. and results yeah. and awards. Okay. Yeah. I want to throw a shout out to Terry Hawkinson and Sean White. I want you guys to come and be inducted into Legends if yeah. you're into it. Yeah. Please come down and hang out with us and party with us and ride yeah. with us. Yeah. We'd love you guys to be here. That'd be sick. Yeah. That'd be super sick. Yeah. Two of the best hanging out. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's good. That's it. That's yeah. a mic drop. That's where we're great. at. Thank you. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, man. That was sick. F and Rad shoutouts this week to Mike Chantry. Thanks for doing the show, man. Special thanks to everyone from our Patreon crew. Our top supporters include wonderful people like Anthony Tororon, Jamie Shaw, Roy Arn Borseth, Heinrich Donneberg, Chris Green, Hayden Pocock, who's the luckiest F and Rad raffle winner of all time. Speaking of which, it's time to do fundraising. I'll get to that in June. Kyle C., the beautiful human Carl Montoya, who got me up to the Bald Face Lodge this year. Thanks, Carl. Scott Grabke, and our newest Big Bucks Patreon supporter, Greg the Cajun Newfie. <laughs> Thank you all. It's the most epic way to support the show, and I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to come back next week for more bonus content from F and Rad Snowboarding, presented by Skyview Campers, and brought to you by F and Rad Productions.